Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Retroverse Nexus. I'm Shiny Sephiroth, and I'm excited to have you here for another review. Now, I'm going to be going over another set of Jokerized characters from McFarlane Toys. The first one we're going to go over is the New 52 Red Robin. Uh, so first, let's go ahead and take a look at the box here. We have our handy dandy scout camp knife here that's going to help us here in a second uh as we can see here on the box uh this has been vandalized and graffitied by the joker presumably himself i hear he's on mcfarland's payroll which is weird uh yeah so we have the this really cool box i like how uh there's even some some slander or libel toward batman here he's a he's a goofy no good guy um, we have uh, this box here. We have some sort of a uh, QR code that you can scan. For those in the future, QR codes are these little amalgamations of dots that we could scan on our phones and it would take us places on the internet. Uh, it's that thing that we had before we were psychically connected to everybody. And here's the back, uh, another uh, vandal vandalization of a New 52 cover. We have Bunker, uh, Tim Drake, Red Robin, as well as uh, the look that Raven had during the New 52 era. I believe that's her. It was more like a, a crow sort of look, and I just the light flare was blocking. But you can see it now. So, like I mentioned in my last Jokerized figure video, I like to keep these boxes. I'm not typically an inbox collector. Oh, I'm not an inbox collector, and I'm typically not a box collector. There are some boxes that I keep for nostalgia reasons, for various reasons for certain boxes. And for these, I, I just like the look and the design. So I cut along here on the top so I can extract the toy without damaging the box as much as possible. And I'm not in it for like resale value or anything, so I don't care if people are like, oh my heavens, you cut the, the tab. Now it's lost value. I only like the, the pure. I, okay, that's fine. You're not going to get this box because I'm never going to sell it. Um, and so, like I mentioned, the last one in these McFarlane boxes, there are these little slits that have been cut out here for tabs. And sometimes when you're trying to open the lid, uh, they can get caught. That wasn't the case here. Let's see on this side. Yep, it's caught. So if you look really close here, uh, this part of the box is slid into the slit on the tab. So I get the dull part of my knife, I slip this in here, and I scoot up against it so I can help lever it and pry it open so we can extract the goodies. Go ahead and pull this out first. Oh heavens, you really don't want to leave, do you? Oh, that's right, yeah, there's a card holder in here, I forgot. Uh, sometimes it looks like uh, McFarlane has stopped doing the card holders for the Jokerized figures based on, you know what, maybe I'm, I'm jumping the gun. In the Dark Knight Rises Nolan Jokerized figures, it did not come with a card stand, but that might be because it does come with a Build-A-Figure. This does not come with a Build-A-Figure, so the card stand that was introduced in this artist series Jokerized line uh, which was carried over to the collector's edition line uh, You can still find it here, and then it comes with these uh, collectible cards and I let once again. I suppose it's to uh, Make up for the fact that this does not have a build-a-figure. Oh, and I did it again just like the last Box I did I went and I peeled a little too much in the wrong spot and uh, I cracked it, but let's see if we can salvage that at the end of all this we have a lot of extracting to do, and it's bound to be difficult. Ah, you know what? I'm thinking, I'm now thinking that the extraction of the puck, the, that's why I call the display stands, the puck 
as well as these cards, these uh, vandalized Joker graffiti cards, which are pretty cool, I think. Here's the back of the cards. Uh, and this one comes with a three of diamonds, an ace of spades, an eight of clubs, no, uh, an ace of clubs, an eight of spades, and a nine of hearts. What's a... The hearts look more like a bat, I mean a Superman symbol. <laughs> um, so we have, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these card holders because I put all my cards in a TCG binder. So uh, I, I'll figure it out, I don't know. Maybe I'll use them uh, to display these playing cards from the Joker, I, I really don't know. Oh heavens, this is much harder to extract than the Build-A-Figure piece. Especially if you're trying not to mutilate the box. But, uh, you know, first world problems, I guess. And, uh... uh trying to slip this in here so that it can look as nice as possible. Probably would help if I wasn't holding something else while doing it at the same time. All right, and let's see if we can use this knife as a little tool to help move some of this stuff back into, ah, I see. This is supposed to go behind. That's gonna be difficult, all right. All right, it's okay. It's not the best uh, little flap. Maybe we can get that to, yeah, that flap is the, the hard part in here. Yeah, it's okay. This part up here is a little messed up, but I mean, it is what it is. Go ahead and slip this in. Oh, I forgot the shell. Ahead and extract our Robin. So to accommodate the wing back here, there's a slit that was put in this wing is, and you know what? It honestly feels more durable than the regular release uh, Robin because that one, its wings were kind of floppy. And uh, even in the display right now, it's uh, I've had to display it in a way that accommodates its crooked wing. This one here feels sturdier, uh, and I don't know if that's just my impression, but wouldn't be surprised if they did a little fixing to it. So these little plastic tabs that keep everything, or plastic um, cords that keep everything in place, I have to cut those from behind. And please, ah, they did it in the foot too. You know, that's uh, it's very difficult when you have this wing that's in the way, and yet you still have, uh, Ta uh, little cords to cut on the foot. They don't understand the need for that. I don't know if it's a, a shock lifting prevention or what it is, but it is annoying. And I guess if it is a shock lifting hat prevention, it's doing its job because this would deter me if I were nefarious from wanting to shoplift. All right, they cut. We are good. This one here is simply scotch tape. You can cut that. Slip the pole out. Oh, upside down. Go ahead and slide that shell back into place. Perfect, but if you're not looking closely, you really can't tell. Looks pretty good to me. And uh, the way I'll display it, they, you won't even notice. So that'll be great. Put it here with the other Jokerized boxes I have to the side. We have the card here. Let's hear a little bit about New 52 Tim Drake, which, for those who don't know, technically is the same as the pre-crisis, I mean, the pre-Flashpoint Tim Drake, i.e. 
rebirth Tim Drake. So uh, what happened is that uh, Dr. Manhattan took advantage of Barry Allen's flashpoint uh, when Pandora was doing some stuff and mixing things together. Dr. Manhattan thought, hey, you know, this universe seems like it's way too hopeful. Let's make it miserable. And that's how the New 52 was born. And then through a combination of uh, Doom Patrol's Milk Wars, uh, some crazy stuff with Mixus Pitalik, uh, and Superman's identity, uh, merging himself with an, his pre-crisis self um, to overwrite what Manhattan did, as well as simply uh, pleading to Dr. Manhattan's um, uh, he, the human side he had left. Uh, everything was uh, reconstituted, and so the universe during Rebirth was like an amalgamation of the New 52 and the pre-crisis lore and everything that happened um, when Super Dad uh, came back after Convergence. Very convoluted, very complicated. Uh, I think that the writers did a good job of trying to mix it up. Uh, I do think that uh, when Dan Didio took over after Jeff Johns uh, was moved over out of his creative uh, director role, it did mess with things a little bit, make things murky. But we'll go into deeper detail into that in another video when I start going over the chronology uh, or what I perceive as the chronology of the DC Universe through comics. But anyway, his real name is Timothy Drake. A self-made hero in every sense of the word, Tim Drake deduced the real identity of Batman and auditioned for the role of his next partner. Batman had lost his most recent sidekick, Jason Todd, in a tragic turn of events, and in Tim's mind, Batman needed a Robin to stay true to himself and his mission. Tim was taken into Bruce's care, where he spent only a brief time serving as Robin before sticking out, striking out on his own as Red Robin. Analytical, almost to a fault, Tim represents the brains of the Batman family's roster of former Robins. As a teen titan, he excelled as both leader and mentor, though following in Batman's footsteps is anything but his dream. And you can see a little bit about that later in the, uh, the Rebirth storyline uh, when he meets his Titans Tomorrow uh, future self, well, alternate future self, potential parallel, uh, potential future timeline. He meets a version of himself who turns into Savior. It's his whole thing. Um, and it's really kind of convoluted because apparently the past of the Titans Tomorrow universe includes elements of... Um, uh, rebirth with Jonathan Kent. Um, it's it's very odd, um, but they were doing their best to try and make everything work, and I think they did overall a good job. Uh, anyway, I think this card um, is definitely uh, if you're going to give the uh, the person who wrote this the benefit of the doubt, it's definitely from later in the Rebirth uh, line, and. Uh, I don't know if they're going to market it as New Fifty Two, I would suggest that the uh, the <laughs> uh, story matches before the events of Rebirth. But I'm just a nerd. I'm being too much. I'm being too pedantic. I think. So anyway, we see here the Red Robin uniform. Like I said, oh yeah, I can I can tell these wings. Uh, or maybe I got a bad batch, I don't know. But these wings are so much better than the one that I received. McFarlane really upgraded this. I think the color scheme is really cool. It really matches the uh, the aesthetic of um, being Jokerized. This guy is all loopy in the head now. He's definitely wanting to uh, highlight how he's a Joker now. And I can you can take this as the same thing that happened in the Snyderverse. Uh, Joker is uh, taunting Batman. Look, he's graffiti. He's basically branding him, labeling him, uh, saying, hey, this guy's mine now. And now we have uh, Tim Drake basically owned by the Joker. His uh, costume has definitely those uh, green and purple uh, accents to highlight everything, to, to say, hey, I'm the Joker's property. Uh, which is funny when you think that Harley Quinn did not go that route, but I guess uh, even from the beginning she was her own person. Good on her. Uh, one thing I didn't like about this figure, and it's very minor, is right here on his left deltoid, you see the Red Robin symbol. It has the Robin being purple and the background green, whereas everywhere else it's just straight blue. 
I think that is probably a production error and that this should be the same as here. Um, and I'm probably going to custom it myself to fix it and make it match everything else. Uh, but anyway, I think the, the graffiti is really cool. Like I said, the wing is sturdy. They made the, the backpack portion that carries the wings. Uh, this cool orange color, I think orange, just like I was saying yesterday with the yellow uh, from uh, the Nolan Batman, uh, his gun and his uh, batarangs. I think the orange also complements this color scheme uh, as well. Um, you see here he has the, uh, and this is going to be vital if you're going to want to pose him, I would suggest getting a one of those flight stands, either from an older McFarlane release or if you have some other toy that came with a flight stand, uh, using it for him. Uh, he's got the uh, double jointed knees that you can go and do stuff like that. I usually like to pose my flyers with one knee up like this and the uh, foot the bent down this way so it kind of looks like they're they're flying up like they their their foot's kind of dangling off the ankle i think that's a, a cool pose that's one of my favorite go-to's anyway um and we got the the pole they painted it purple instead of the, the i believe it was silver that it came with uh in the original release once again these hands are really really stiff um i get why they are i mean production and whatnot um, and I know that you're, I mean, part of it is trying to reduce the variance of uh, errors in the production line. And so, uh, using things in a certain way helps reduce errors and, uh, with how much bulk, uh, product, uh, McFarlane turns out, I think that it is fantastic. And that's one thing I think that not a lot of people understand is some people say, oh, but the quality of this, but the quality of that. With the amount that he produces, I think that his quality is very high. And so I'm, I'm a big fan of McFarland toys and, and what they put out. So here we go. Here's our, our Tindrake Robin. It is uh, here. We're going to get ourselves a flight stand here in a second. Set him up with the rest of the Jokerized figures. And uh, yeah, I look forward to that. I'll see you in a second when I pull up the Dark Knight. All right, so I think he turned out really well. I went ahead and I placed New 52 Red Robin right here next to the other Robins we have here, or the former Robins. We have a uh, New 52 Nightwing who was Jokerized. We have this uh, alternate timeline or alternate universe version of uh, Bruce Wayne who was King Robin. We have the Robin Crows from the Batman Who Laughs timeline, as well as Batman Who Laughs himself with uh, the Mortal Kombat Batman Who Laughs and Batman Who Laughs with Hawkman's Wings that only happened in a cover. So maybe it's some other timeline where the Batman Who Laughs almost got to where he wanted to, but because he chose to take Hawkman's Wings, his whole plan fell apart. And then his universe was destroyed in the forge of the dark multiverse. I don't know. I don't work here. I just make videos. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really like how he turned out here behind uh, his Robin cohort. And then we see the rest of the Jokerized crew and the setup I have over here. And we have one more Jokerized person to add to the mix. And that will be in the next video. So there's the video for today. Apologies for mentioning I was going to do the Dark Knight Returns Batman at the beginning of the video, but uh, I just decided with the length of the video as is, might as well just uh, keep it to the New 52 Red Robin and save the, uh, the Batman from Miller's run for the, uh, for the next video. But uh, with that, we will finalize, as of uh, November of 2023, all of the Jokerized villains or uh, figures that McFarlane has released. I guess they're technically villains. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so very much for stopping by. If you haven't liked the video yet and you did like it, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it, especially since it's going to help you all out as soon as we get to a thousand subs then we'll start doing regular giveaways. The first of those giveaways will be the Platinum Hawkman. 
So yeah, can't really beat a free figure. All you gotta do is, oh, and just to let you know, it's not about liking or, or subscribing uh, because, uh, because of YouTube's privacy uh, clauses, I don't have access to that. But if you comment on the video, then your account will be put into the drawing um, via comments. So make sure you comment in the bottom of the video. Uh, but the comments won't start accumulating. I mean, we'll retroactively look back at them, but we're not going to do that until we hit the thousand subs. So um, until we get to that point, I'm going to have a whole bunch of platinum figures sitting here uh, waiting to be uh, given out in giveaways. Uh, until then, thank you very much for your patronage, and I'll see you in the next video.